at this time, but St. Paul speaking about our human desire for vengeance, and you all want to get back, right? Let's all be honest. Don't we, isn't vengeance part of what we feel sometimes, the need to smack somebody who smacks us? If you ever had a brother or sister, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Because there is a human instinct that says fight back. Some of you even said to your kids, you got to fight back when somebody knocks you down, you got to knock them down. Well, this is not the way of God. I'm going to tell a story on myself about New York City. I am not a New York City fan at all. But a friend of mine had traveled, when I was in deaf ministry, I traveled the country regularly. And I was in a meeting in Los Angeles, and a friend of mine who lived in San Francisco found out that I was going to be in Los Angeles and voluntarily got on a plane and flew from San Francisco to Los Angeles, asked me to spend a few more days there, which I was not really happy to do, but I did just sort of because I was trying to be nice. Not a close friend, someone I barely knew, actually. But she wanted me to, to show me some of California, and I stayed a few days. And then the next year, she called me up and said, guess what, I have a meeting in New York City. If I could fly from San Francisco to Los Angeles for you, you could take the train from Baltimore to New York. And I thought, yay. I'm not a New York fan at all. But I got on the train and I went. The trouble was the dry cleaner lost my winter coat. It was winter time. And um, not only did they lose my winter coat, but I had 102 fever and I got on the train and went anyway. As soon as I left the train station, someone robbed me, which was always fun. I got in the cab with a man who said, why'd you let that guy take advantage of you like that? I saw what happened. He said, why are you so naive? What do you do for a living, lady? And I said, I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. He pulls the cab over, opens the window, asks to hold my hand, asks me to pray for him and his family in Haiti. He said, I'm not going to charge you. Don't worry about that. He said, I turned off the meter, and I, we prayed for Haiti and his family. I got to the hotel so bedraggled, and my friend from San Francisco worked for the Mandarin Oriental Hotel in San Francisco, one of the premier hotel chains in the world. At that time, there was not a Mandarin in Manhattan, so she had her manager call a manager of another hotel in their association. We stayed at a really fancy fancy, fancy place, which is not where I usually stay. It was so fancy that the guy who opened the door, the doorman was dressed better than I was. He had epaulets and a top hat and white gloves and this beautiful coat, and he said, ma'am, are you sure you're at the right hotel? I looked so bad and sounded so bad and was sneezing and coughing and wheezing and all that stuff that they actually made my friend come down from the room and verify that I was the right person before they let me in the, up to the room, gave me a key. Well, you know, we walked through the streets of New York. It was freezing cold. It was miserable. I hated it. But then I got back, and the light was blinking on the phone in my room, and I thought, oh, no, that cannot be anything good. I called the desk. They suddenly were very, very friendly because they said, is this Reverend Kofiel? And I thought, oh, no, because the only people who knew that I'm Reverend Kofiel were back at my church in Maryland. I'll never forget picking up the phone and getting the message that a woman who was part of the deaf ministry family because she was not a member of my congregation, but we all worked together and traveled the country together, had been stabbed to death by her husband in front of their eight-year-old child. I cannot tell you how sick I was. I almost threw up, literally threw up when I heard that. And I got on the train and I went home. You know what I was thinking as I was going home? I was thinking, God, I hope they fry him. I hope they fry him. There was no death penalty in Maryland then, and I have been opposed to the death penalty since I was a kid and learned about Jesus Christ, but I was hoping they would bring it back and kill this man for the horrible thing he had done to this very kind, sweet woman. Guess when her funeral ended up being? Ash Wednesday. And that was the day that I thought, wow. Wow. Jesus Christ went to the cross for my sin. And I am so quick to judge someone else and think he should be killed for his. So I had some talking to do to God that night. And I remember on September 11th when we threw the doors of the church open and people from the community walked in, because I lived in a little community then where people actually could walk to church. People from around the community came and they said, when I read this passage, they said, we don't want to hear about not taking revenge. We want revenge. To want revenge is human, but to seek God above wanting revenge is divine. 
And it's hard. It's hard work to be a Christian, isn't it? Because passages that you read and don't even think about one day will suddenly strike you, just as Ash Wednesday struck me that year. Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. For in doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. It's not to hurt people that we help them, but it's to show them a different way. I don't know about you, but I am humbled when someone that I have wronged is kind to me. So where do we go from here in this nation? We have people in our nation calling for civil war over political differences right now. We have racial divides like I've never seen in my lifetime, and I have lived since the 1950s. We have people at each other's throats over political disagreements. We have war that is threatening the entire planet economically. We have an e environmental crisis that's threatening the planet's own ability to withstand and move forward for our children and our grandchildren. So I think these are moments when we stop and we remember a terrible event in the life of our nation. Do what Mr. Rogers said, to look for the helpers. There's always someone trying to help, which is why I wanted Kevin to speak today about his experience, why Ann is up here this morning, why I asked she and Mike to come in uniform, and we remember those people like Mr. Shadow Price, who spent how many years with her, the Cockeysville Volunteer Fire Department, Kathy? How many? That's two years longer than I've lived on this planet. Look how old I am. I'm falling apart up here. 66 years of service. I want to ask those of you who have served in the volunteer fire department or in any other fire department, whether it be military or professional or volunteer, if you've worked in any way with one of these organizations that provides help and healing, please stand right now. Thank you for your willingness to help. We need to be the people who run toward the hurt of the world, not run away from it. It's hard to be someone who loves Jesus Christ more than we love our own need for vengeance and our own need to hit back. But that's what we're called to do. It's hard to be faithful. It's hard to hold on. I'm going to tell you right now, I've struggled the last couple of weeks because I have been in pain almost 24 hours a day, pain like I've never experienced before with my shoulder. It's hard to remain faithful, but I make myself every morning say my prayer of thanksgiving first thing. Thank you for my baptism and place in your church. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ to be the Savior of the world and my Savior. Thank you, Lord. And to open ourselves up to what God calls us to do for others. So where do we go from here? It's up to us, isn't it? I'm going to challenge you. I told you I'm going to ask you every day to pray for the safety of our schools and the children there and the faculty and the staff, the cafeteria lunch ladies like Lisa and my mom, the people who clean up after kids all day, the people who are tired, who work very little money in some cases, the teachers who use their own resources to buy materials for their children when we don't provide them. We, I wish you could have seen Jenny's face because I didn't get to see it myself because I was out here this week, worked from home, but Kara said she was amazed at what we did. That's what we did in a couple weeks. Imagine what we can do when we really commit ourselves every day to praying for the safety of our school children. Pray for the world every day. Pray for each other every day. Pray for me every day. I honestly feel you praying for me when you pray for me. I feel it. I feel the relief of my pain and the relief in my soul, because it's hard to be in pain so long. It eats at your soul. So pray for one another. Lift one another up. Look for ways to be a helper. It was Mahatma Gandhi who said, an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. So we have to think like Jesus did and remember that we are called to build the world up. Uh, I asked Lambert to sing a song, and he learned just for this morning. It's one that I go to when I am in need. It's called Hold On By... Um, I can't think of her first name now. Lauren. Lauren Daigle. She's a Christian singer who was on The Voice, I think, or one of those shows. Joseph, if you don't know her, I hope you'll look her up online and listen to some of her music. 
this is one that I go to when I am in a difficult situation. And I hope indeed that it will be a song that becomes meaningful for you as well.